according to the uh, stool pigeons at the Gioli Saracino trial in 2012, this is where, uh, according to government cooperators, Joseph Capitello, Dino Calabro, and I think Sebastian Saracino, this is where, uh, back here, it's where they buried, or in this general area, they buried Billy Catolo, who uh, the government claimed was the underboss of the Colombo family in 1999, and a few years before that, where they buried Colombo Associates Richard Greaves, and, uh, and another guy, I don't know what, what he was, Carmine Gar Gargano, who was allegedly, according to the witnesses, involved in some kind of chop shop scam. He was a college student too, I don't know. Look back here. <laughs> Definitely bury a fucking body back here. So, apparently, I'm not sure exactly where back here, but the train tracks are, I don't know, a couple hundred yards ahead, a hundred yards ahead maybe. Before I came back here, I saw some guys with dirt bikes. They'd just been riding back here. You can see by the tracks on the ground, it's definitely a place you can ride dirt bikes. Yeah, I guess back in the 90s, they were dumping bodies back here. And those are just the ones that the uh, that the cooperators testified about. If they were instructed to bury bodies back here, if, if what they said was true, because they did get caught in a bunch of lies and contradictions and inaccuracies at the trial. <laughs> Their statements didn't match their uh, their FBI debriefings, and according to uh, knowledgeable sources, I should say this ship back is probably vagrants back here. Everything in the summertime, hope they don't run into any fucking weirdos back here. Yeah, people definitely dump all kinds of shit back here. But uh, yeah, the cooperators Joseph Compitello and Dino Calabro. When they were testifying, they were asked why their uh, their testimony didn't match their deb FBI debriefings, and there were allegations that the FBI was just making up the cases they went along. And uh, I, I, like I know Joseph Compitello, I was reading his testimony before I came out here. The uh, like he said in his debriefings, where they asked him on the stand, anyway, what was reported in the reports, he said, in the FBI reports from his original interviews in 2008 after he flipped a few months after they, he got arrested for murder with a bunch of these other guys in, from Farmingdale and various parts of Long Island and Brooklyn he didn't say Tommy Gioli was with him at uh at like a meeting before they killed Billy Catullo it was just Dino Calabro who was his superior who was an associate of the Colombo family according to his testimony and uh two other associates Joe Compitello and Dino Saracino, alleged associates, reported to this guy Calabro. And in his testimony, excuse me, they asked him in his testimony, you know, why does why is it why does it say in your debriefings that the day you found out they were gonna kill Billy Catullo, the same day they murdered him, Dino Calabro told you at a meeting at the uh, in Brooklyn at 75th 75th uh, Street and 20th Avenue in the corner. But now you're testifying that Jolie was at the meeting. But like, I don't know, his statements didn't add up. There was all... Tommy Jolie actually... Actually, uh... Did phone interviews from jail. He has a, he's a blog. And he did phone interviews with my friend Frank, Frank Morano, the radio host. Saying uh, how, you know, the FBI was lying about all these different things. Long story short, him and Dino Saracino, who he got, let, who he got arrested with, who... Tommy Gioli, according to the government, was the uh, acting boss of the Colombo family in 2008 when they got arrested that June. Dino Saracino, Joe Compitello, Dino Calabro, those were like allegedly his underlings, according to the government. Dino Calabro was like his captain, and the other guys reported to Calabro. And uh, but Calabro and Capitello and a bunch of other guys cooperated with the FBI. And they flipped after they were arrested or in the months after. And uh, Dino Saracino and Tommy Julie went to trial together. On I think Tommy Julie was facing six murders and Dino Saracino was facing three, if I remember correctly, and racketeering and witness tampering and a couple other things. And they they beat all the murder charges. Tommy Julie ended up facing 20 years at sentencing but he got like 18 and a half years for murder conspiracy and I don't know some shit and Dino Saracino actually got 50 years even though he beat three murders for like loan charging and uh witness tampering I forget what else obstruction of justice I forget exactly but 
they um yeah they hammered him for 50 years and really it's because he wouldn't testify against Tommy Gioli I mean Dino Saracino's own brother Sebastian Saracino testified against him that he helped drop the drop one of the bodies out here in this area in Long Island in Farmingdale which is it's like I mean it's like a train tracks right there then the other side of that it's businesses it's 110 it's I don't know if you can see but it's and yeah, right before I came here, I saw some guys on dirt bikes. You can see the tracks, fresh dirt bike tracks. It's probably a fun place to ride. Yeah, but this is journalism, man. I guess. Yeah, this is definitely a place you could dig bodies out here. I don't know where exactly. That's the train tracks right over there. It was back here somewhere. So in 2008... I heard something. In 2008, they uh, these guys were arrested in June 2008. I think Dino Saracino, I think it was like 10 people, more or less, got arrested. I, I don't know how many people, 8, 10, 12, something like that. Like a whole bunch of gangsters, allegedly with the Colombo family. Sonny Franzese, the legendary Colombo underboss, was one of the people wrapped up in this indictment. He didn't have anything to do with these murders, though, according to the indictment anyway. Or he wasn't involved, according to the indictment. Nobody could place him with them. I don't know. I think Dino Saracino is the only one who wasn't arrested, but he was. then he was arrested on a superseding indictment shortly after. And uh, when they were first arrested, I think it was like one or two, maybe three murders that the crew was arrested for. And they weren't all charged with the same bodies. But then this guy, Joe Compitello, cooperated that summer. And I, I guess he started debriefing in September or October of 2008. And he led the feds right back here. to, uh, and, they, and they were digging for three bodies back here, I think. They only found one, the Billy Cotullo body, and then they didn't find the others, or, but they found remains of one. I don't know exactly where they were digging, but back here somewhere. And and then Dino Calabro tried to cut a deal shortly after. One of the one of the murders they were actually that they weren't charged with originally, but Joseph Capitello gave up after he started cooperating. Was that he said that they. Him, Dino Saracino, and Dino Calabro murdered a police officer in 1997, and they didn't know it was a cop. A guy named Ralph Dole was a housing cop. They didn't know he was a cop, but they were just told to go kill this guy, and this is where he lived, in Brooklyn. And they went and shot him outside his house, and then Compitello and Calabro claimed that they found out the next day in, in the news, a newspaper, TV, whatever, that it was a cop who had been murdered the night before in Brooklyn. And they, they were just, they were totally blindsided by it. Because, you know, gangsters, mobsters don't, don't kill cops. But, uh... This is... I don't know, but they, but these guys, there were two trials. Tommy Gioli was accused at trial of ordering these guys to do the murder by his superiors or whatever. And so he gave it to his underlings, Calabro and Capitello and Saracino, to kill this cop. And Dino Saracino was accused of being one of the shooters. But they beat that charge, and then... Tommy Gioli's alleged superior, a guy named Joel Kakeki. I don't Casey. I don't know how you say his name. Joel Waverly. He uh, was accused of ordering Tommy Gioli to have this murder carried out. He went to trial separately in 2013. The other trials in 2012, and he beat that crime. I think that's the only thing he was charged with was that murder. Like like Gioli and Saracino were charged with a whole bunch of shit other than all these murders. But you know, one of the reasons why they beat these murders is because the witnesses told so many contradictory statements like like joseph capitello at first he said he wasn't involved in the murder directly like he just stole a car for calabro and saracino i think and they went they used it for a murder that he found out after what you know that they had killed a cop but then later i think in his second fbi meeting or his third meeting with the feds in his proper sessions he said no no he was involved directly like like he was in the lookout car the the back of the crash car that would crash into like a cop car that if it was pursuing the shooters who he said were Dino Saracino and Dino Calabro, who were actually cousins of the two Dinos. But then when Dino, Dino Calabro cooperated, I think at first he said that Saracino was in the, the backup car and it was him and Capitello that were the shooters. And, you know, may, so let's just say that Dino Calabro and Dino Saracino were the shooters. Maybe he was trying to protect his cousin so he wouldn't be, uh, maybe he was just trying to keep him out of it as best he could. I, I don't know what happened or didn't happen, but... The uh, Saracino and Gioli beat that murder. And then later on, the next year, or months later, or whatever it was, it was uh, Joe, Joe Waverly beat the other one. But, yeah, this is back here. This is where Billy Catullo was, uh, where he was found. Back here. And then I think they found 
some remains that they said may have been Richie, Richie Greaves, like his clothes or something. Or they found dog bones. I don't know. And Carmine Gargano's body that they never found. But uh, but originally his body had been buried at a chop shop that he operated with Joe Compatello in Brooklyn. And then they moved the body like a week or two later or something out here to Long Island. But I think when 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 they first searched that bot that chop shop, the a garage, whatever, where they would chop up cars in Brooklyn, they uh, they found some of his remains under the cement or something from where Joe Compatello said they were. But yeah, man, this is so they they found Billy Catullo's body back here. Now let's just say it's true that this was like a mafia dumping ground. There were probably a whole bunch of people buried back here before those other three bodies were that 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 those witnesses never even knew about. I'm sure that those probably weren't the first bodies buried back here. I'm like looking over my shoulder, some fucking homeless vagrant is gonna run up on me. But you know, if you grew up near here, this is probably a fun place to run around and play manhunting. Hang out in the woods with your friends. It's a cool little park. And yeah, they got dirt bike tracks back here. But yeah, for years I passed by here when I was in this part of Long Island and never actually came back here. But now it's the fucking quarantine coronavirus. It's April 16th. And uh, you know what? Let's go down a little bit. Let's go see how close we can get to the train tracks over here. It's. I don't really feel like walking through the mud. Gotta be careful, there's ticks along out too. You can get sick with Lyme disease back here. Yeah, I think they said it was near the train tracks where they found the body. I'm not sure. It's back here somewhere. Should put up like a little landmark for the guy. Some kind of statue in the woods. I, mean, I don't know, is that disrespectful? I don't mean to disrespect the guy's family or his memory. But. Yeah, it's definitely like a fun place if you were a kid to run around and play manhunt and, you know, take a girlfriend for walks in the woods and possibly run into a serial killer. I don't know if you're a teenager. I'm not advocating it, but you know, teenagers smoke weed or you know try cigarettes for the first time. This is the kind of place you would do something like that in the woods. Build forts back here. If you're a kid, I don't know. Who knows what the fuck is, is back here? I'm, I'm if, if they found that guy's body, there were probably a whole bunch of other bodies back here that people put here over the years. Uh, that guy Tommy Gioli was accused of being the street boss of the Colombo family in 2008. Apparently he was running the uh, Colombo family from like 2003 or 2004 to 2008 on the street. Allegedly, you know. He wasn't convicted of that. But he was from Farmingdale originally. And Joe Compatello and Dio Calabro testified that Joey instructed them where to bury the body. Like back here. Like he knew about this place. So who knows. Maybe, maybe Tommy Joey buried a bunch of other bodies back here. But again, I'm not saying nothing bad about the guy. He, uh, he was not convicted of any murders. He was, in the words of my friend Frank Morano, he was barely convicted of like murder conspiracy. And I think Frank said that because he, he actually sat in the trials. He didn't just interview Tommy over the phone. He sat there and watched the witnesses lie and get caught in all kinds of shit. And, you know, maybe the witnesses didn't even want to lie. Maybe maybe it's true. They, they were trying to fit the FBI's narrative. Like the FBI was, the FBI was making up the cases they went along. Like the theories of the case kept changing or whatever as more witnesses came forward. So say the feds involved were crooked and they were just making shit up as they went along because apparently there was no no real physical evidence tying Tommy Jolie to these murders or anything. It was just the say-so of these witnesses. Say uh, I'd walk back there. They could be like fucking quicksand or some shit. I'm alone back here. <laughs> the corona, like what am I going to say? Like, it's the fucking ambulance. If somebody finds me or a cop comes to interview me, if uh, I get caught in quicksand or I get, <laughs> something happens back here in the coronavirus, like, like, what were you doing back there? I don't know. I was shooting a video like a fucking weirdo for YouTube about the, the Billy Catullo murder. <laughs> but, uh... I forget what I was saying. So, yeah, according to Frank Morano, he was barely convicted of, of this murder conspiracy, whatever. Meaning that, like... Like, you know, the jurors, you know... They, they couldn't convict nobody of these murders because the witnesses got caught so many lies and contradictions from their uh, debriefing reports. And there was all kind of shady shit that was going on, like... Like, Joe Compatello, like, his sentencing where he admitted to all the things he was pleading guilty to. Apparently, the FBI lost the transcript. If, if I remember the story correctly, they lost the transcript of the proceeding. So, they had to come back and do, sentence him all over again and reenact what happened. Like, some, some weird story. But the thought, what I'm told is that they basically tossed it out. And, because they wanted to change the crimes he was pleading guilty to. Or, or the theory of what happened. The motives, I don't know. 
because you know the witnesses their stories didn't line up but so yeah so Frank was saying that Tommy Gioli was just barely convicted meaning that the jurors they thought maybe he's guilty of something but we're not going to put him down for murder because you know how can you with all these these liars etc and uh so they just ah, we'll just convict him of something minor but then he was looking at 20 years, but the judge gave him a break down to 18 and a half years, if I remember correctly, because so many people came forward at his sentencing to talk about all the good deeds he had done, just helping people, you know, being a good guy in the neighborhood and in, in Farmingdale, Long Island, helping people, helping families, you know, looking out for kids, etc. And the judge said, you know, Tommy Gioli, Mr. Gioli, you're, you have, you've lived a, a double life. And on one hand, you're this notorious gangster. On the other hand, you're like a really good citizen. So he gave him a break at sentencing, only gave him 18 and a half years. Uh, the way I remember it anyway and but Dino Saracino they uh, they gave him the max man they gave him 50 years and I, I don't think he thought he was going to get 50 years I, mean, I don't know but I don't think he thought he was going to get 50 years maybe like 20, 25, 30 whatever for all these loan sharking counts but they gave him the the, uh, the max for witness tampering and shit like it was I guess before I, I don't remember specifically but I think before uh, they were indicted in June 2008 when that whole case came down there were a bunch of subpoenas in the months prior, and I guess, you know, according to the witnesses or whatever, the, uh, according to the informants, you know, these guys were out there trying to, uh, impact what people were going to say at these grand juries, at these, when people were getting subpoenaed in to testify about, you know, activities on Long Island, and I guess they gave him, I don't know, they gave him five or ten years for that. But yeah, he got 50 years basically for not testifying against Tommy Jolie like his like his brother did and his cousin did. Imagine that, you're sitting in a fucking courtroom and your brother and your cousin are testifying against you. That's fucking crazy, man. I mean, dude, no matter how bad your situation is, if you can't handle it, how are you going to testify against your own brother? Forget that he's your best friend, the guy you've been riding with, had your back to the wall with, committed murders with over like... A 15, 20 year period But how do, you, how do you testify against your brother And your cousin Oh my god I mean those guys would be blackballed from their family But uh I mean just, You know the, the newspaper I, I wish I went to the trial But the newspaper quoted Dino Saracino as saying When his brother was testifying That he that He uh, he screamed out in court Don't call me your brother no more Sebi And Shit I wouldn't want you to call me your brother no more either If you testified against me Try to give you a life sentence I mean dude No matter how bad it is for you I can do that. Let's get out of here. I gotta go get the food shopping at Costco, which is nearby. And there's a line outside to get in. But, yeah, I wonder if I could be standing over some bodies right now. Yeah, look at all these bottles back here. There's definitely like teenagers that hang out back here and fucking do drugs back here and have, you know, ditch, ditch parties. I don't know. This is pretty cool. Put dirt bike riding back here. I would love to have a motorcycle, but I know I'd fucking kill myself on one. I've been on one before, but... I just, I mean, I'll go ATV quad riding, I'll go uh, snowmobiling, that's really fun. But a motorcycle, I just, I, I wouldn't last, I know I wouldn't. But, uh, I'd love to have one though, maybe one day. If, uh, maybe one day when medicine is better, and they can repair your bones, like, really quick, with no side effects, and they can just put you back together, and rebuild the cartilage in your back and everything, then, uh, oh, this so ground is soft, it could be quicksand. <laughs> then I would love to have a motorcycle. But... I just feel like I'd end up paralyzing the one one. But yeah, Billy Cthulhu is buried back here somewhere, man. But one of the reasons why I came back here is because I'm, uh, during this quarantine, I've been thinking, you know, we're doing a TV show, John and I, Witsec Mafia, and some other people involved, and a separate documentary the two of us are producing, which we haven't really announced yet. But it kind of got put on hold for the moment and filming anything because of the coronavirus. And I mean, I don't want to sit there and interview people in a small room, but it's, uh, so I'm trying to think of what to do with my time. And I said, you know, I'm going to, I want to write some shit. I'm going to come out here with some great content. And where did I, I don't even know where I, how I entered here. I think it was over here. And I had an idea that festered in my head over the last couple of years called Grave Diggers for a novel, you know, like a really fun novel. I can make like a 200 page like a short book um, about these gangsters on Long Island and it was kind of inspired by I, mean, I say not based on because what, what, what am I going to base it on witnesses who got caught lying uh, their story what, why should I believe them but it's inspired by the Gioli case and, and that crew and the bodies they 
buried in Long Island, allegedly. Anyway, I mean, they did find Billy Catullo's body back here, so... And if Joe Compatello was a lowly associate when they killed him, and, and him and Dino Calabro, if he found his body back here, you know, something must have happened with the Colombo family for him to for him to know where the, the body was buried of the underboss. But anyway, I had an idea that was kind of like inspired by that whole case, but different, like a black comedy and, you know, and the mafia genre is like so, people say it's played out. I don't think it's played out. It's just that people keep doing stupid shit, making stupid fucking films and stupid fucking stories, you know. But I thought I had an idea for a cool story set in Brooklyn and Long Island in the 90s and 2000s, inspired by that case, but but fiction, total fictional, not, not nothing true. And I came back here maybe to take some pictures for, uh, well, anyway, I, I've kept the folder for several years. It's called Grave Diggers, the name of the book, Grave Diggers. And it's about this mob murder crew and these bodies they bury on Long Island and I don't want to give too much of the plot away, but it's just it's inspired by that case. And I don't know, a couple of weeks ago I sat down, I started writing it. I started writing the first chapter of the novel. I mean, I've kept the folder, all kinds of ideas in it. And then I had other ideas from before that. From I guess I came up with that idea four or five years ago, maybe. But I had other ideas for just for random scenes for movies, whatever, that would just keep it in a file. And I never did nothing with them, but... It, I don't know, a few years back, it just hit me, oh, I, you know, I could spin them into a book like this, and, but I never actually sat down to write it, I was just always busy with other shit, but so a few weeks ago during the coronavirus, I said, you know, I want to I maybe take a stab at that, I had written a scene for it or two here over the last couple of years, but I never really sat down for it, and I figured this is as good a time as any, so I started writing the first chapter, but I got bored with it pretty quick, though. But I knew I needed a, a new screenwriting sample for something, a new crime drama sample. So I said, you know what? Let me write it as a movie script, and maybe I'll publish it on Amazon after. It just has an ebook. Um, and then you know, and then it'll be a sample. Maybe it'll get made. Maybe it won't. Who knows? But I'll sell it as an ebook too. So it's still it's content that's out there. But I don't know. I kind of want to work on other things. But I said, you know what? Let me write like a short screenplay, kind of like a short story instead of a novel. And I wrote, like, you know, 30-something pages that I'm just revising it and uh, I'm going to show it to some people for some notes and then I'm going to publish it as an ebook, it's Like a short story, but a short screenplay instead. I said, let me come back here and get some pictures for, uh, maybe for the cover. Because where the book is, like, inspired by a series of mob murders and this crew, this dangerous crew in Long Island and Brooklyn in, in the 90s and 2000s. But, like, a black comedy, too, though, not, not too serious. Uh, the short story, the short screenplay is just like one of those murders and grave diggers, you know, they're digging a grave in Long Island. What is that, a Christmas tree over there? Can you see that? A fucking Christmas tree? Maybe it's, maybe it's a Sasquatch, I don't know. There's probably all kinds of weird fucking people in these woods. But, but yeah, so let me come back here, get some, uh, some photos and some, maybe make a little video about where they found this guy. And again, you know what? If they found his body here, there's probably a whole bunch of other bodies that were buried here over the years. I would not be surprised. But, uh, I don't know, it's got to be close to 4 o'clock. i got to go to Costco before they close, get some food. But, yeah, man, grave diggers. And then, you know, if, if this is where, you're, where, you're, uh, where your story takes place, it's good to actually go to the location and get a feel for it. Because you probably come up with ideas that uh, you wouldn't have had otherwise. I'm gonna come back here one day, maybe film more video, but I'm out of here for now. Peace. Yeah, this is a great place. To, this is a great place to shoot a short film. Maybe at some point, I'll shoot a scene from Grave Diggers or something, just you know, just for fun. Or if I actually get around to writing the, the whole book, maybe I'll shoot like a uh, a short film to help shop it as a movie. But I would definitely film it back here. Why not? I don't know they got dirt bike riders back here. This, yeah, this is obviously a popular spot. There's garbage all over the place. This is definitely a spot where kids come to hang out, have parties, and God knows what. All right, I'll take it. Let me take. Uh, let's get out of here. It's probably gonna be people looking at me, walking out of here. Like, what, who is this weirdo back here in the woods where they found a bunch of bodies? Oh, look at this garbage. This is definitely people. This is definitely a place where people come. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is I can't remember. This is where I walked in. There can't be.
And again, this video is done with all due respect to the Gioli family, to the Catullo family, to anybody involved in the case. I'm not trying to disrespect nobody. Just, you know, just filming some shit back here. I guess you can walk out over there. But let's follow the path, see where it takes us. Path less, the road less taken. Packages back here with an UPS, Postal Service. What is this? All cotton? Who knows what the hell that's from? I'm telling you, there's probably, you forget the mob, mob murders that bodies are buried back here. There's probably all kinds of people that are buried back here over the fucking years. This is definitely a place where you can pull it off. I mean, I don't know now. They got cameras across the street. But, uh, you know, people probably burying bodies back here in the 60s and the 70s. Probably nothing new. You could drive back here, probably. People probably come in here with a car. I don't know. I have no idea where that takes you to or what's back there, but somebody owns this property. You know, let's go over here for a second. Hmm. Huh. Got a mohawk right now. Imagine that. The cops come back here and ask me what I'm doing back here. I have a fucking mohawk. And, uh, <laughs> and a fucking respirator around my neck. Yeah, coffee lid. Who knows what goes on back here? Uh, yeah, there's probably all kinds of shit that's going on back here. All right, let's get out of here. I gotta go get food before they close. Nice outside. It's April 16th. It's getting nice out. Too bad everybody's inside with this fucking coronavirus. I have a weapon on you when you come back here because you know who you should have run into. Oh, there's people there. Dirt bike riders. Dirt bike riders. Go ahead. Spot. Oh, yeah, man. Boning Place in Banffy Plaza North. I can see that sign. This is where uh, Joe Compatello testified that they left the body back here somewhere. That's so why I came over here. It's right by Costco, right to get some food. Yeah, you could definitely leave the body back there. I doubt anybody would have ever found it if they didn't say where it was.